So, the X Talks is by Professor Ron from Tel University, and the main independence credit to the Yale Okay, thank you. Okay, how are you going? Uh, you want some coffee? <laughs> because I'm just smiling and saying, before I start, I want to say a few words. <laughs> about, about Sergei, because I really, I'm so happy to be, to be here and to be able to contribute for, uh, for this uh, celebration of, of your birthday. Sergei is really a great logician, a great person. About being a great logician, this I knew only before I met him, because he solved the problem uh, about probability logic which I had tried and failed. But I forgive him for this, okay? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he did your share of things. <laughs> and about the chief of personality, I tell them uh, some anecdote. At 31 December 1999, Sergei was visiting Tel Aviv University and came with Lena and Boaz uh, Trachtenbrot or Boris Abramovich, the way they call him still in Russia, and his wife uh, to celebrate the new, uh, the new millennium in our place. And Sergei, like a good Russian, brought with him a bottle of high quality vodka. <laughs> there was a small problem though. Trachtenbrot already then was not very young person, and he's even older now, and I don't drink alcohol at all. <laughs> so, but Sergei, as usual, find a simple, elegant solution. He drank for the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, and every while where, you know, the TV, there was another place that where people were celebrating the new millennium, and we happily joined them every hour. Sergei with the vodka, I with the Sprite, and uh, we are, that was a great fun. Okay, but now let's turn to uh, the mathematical part. And this is also an opportunity for me to present work I'm doing for several years. It's progressing slowly, but there is some progress every time concerning the foundation of mathematics form, which I don't have many opportunities to present because this is not the kind of stuff the one get grants, student, etc. in computer science department. And form was after all the reason that I became a logician many, many years ago. Uh, my interest in the in foundation of mathematics. Now, of course, this foundation of mathematics is a big subject. And there are several, more than one, uh, important problems there. So, for example, in this conference, there were two talks, one of Friedman, one of Geithman. They were very, very different in nature. But the way I see it, there was something common that the big question behind both of them, again, the way I understand it, is what can we possibly know? When the meaning of no <coughs> is somewhat flexi flexible and now perhaps for several degrees of knowledge, and understanding. I interested, interested mostly in what I think is easier problem, and this is uh, what can we be certain about. So the question of certainty. And this I interested since then I was already an undergraduate student, at least since I read a book by Maurice Klein, which is called Mathematics, the Loss of Certainty. <laughs> the, this, the, and later I discovered that many people, the main thing they take for getting and theorems and other uh, great results of logic in the previous century is that uh, mathematics is not certain anymore. And, and so many, especially nowadays in postmodern others, would say, well, if mathematics is not certain, then certainly nothing is certain. <laughs> and they feel very happy about it for some reason. Well, I am not. <laughs> because I think that at least there are parts of mathematics that are not certain, but the great parts which, which are certain. And so my uh, really <coughs> modest goal 
is to develop absolute reliable systems for predicative sensory, identifying uh, uh, predicative certain. Uh, well, this is my talk after all, so <laughs> you have to remember this because not everybody, maybe not everybody accept this. And is the following two properties. So sufficiently applicative mathematics. And I also take a modest view of what is applicative mathematics, so not trying to have every applicative, possibly applicative mathematics. So if somebody comes and use in physics something that is not predicative, it's not going to work with me. And so if it is certain, if there is some piece of mathematics, then somebody might be try to use it. So, uh, for me, applicative mathematics, let's say, is the mathematics I learned in my first two, two years of mathematics. I did that even about this. And the second one is close resemblance to real mathematical practice. And this is important here because for the first thing, sufficiently applicative mathematics, that was already a great work that was done, I think, demonstrate that this is possible by Saul Pfefferman and others. Under the slogan, a little bit goes a long way. But the systems, no matter how Saul try to simplify them, are still not something that it's something only, only, only logicians can try, they can understand, not working mathematics in other, in other part of, uh, of mathematics. By the way, I think logician or mathematician, that's for the record, of course. <laughs> there are other views that, uh, that I heard. So, those are example, mathematical practice. So, people don't, we don't have to say, oh, exactly when the work, here I cross the border, if you don't, they don't care to, it's be okay. And even perhaps doing implementation of or proof, uh, proof checker, or proof developer on the computer, after all, I am in computer science department. So, so the main thing perhaps is the ear innovation is the second part. Now, why set toward? Again, I'm thinking in the term of student of first and second year. And what can I do when I learned the differential uh, integral uh, analysis or other parts? I was not introduced the term of category. I learned this name much later, no types. Perhaps there are some implicit, but something with load. No types in uh, the ordinals until I came to learn advanced topology. It was absurd. So, but there were sets. So, already the first week, we were introduced to uh, real numbers who that can cut. We were following a Hebrew, a Hebrew version of Hirten Goals, which is a very famous uh, textbook in Russian, also translated, uh, partially translated into English. Hirten uh, Goals starts with that can cut at the first, first chapter. And also, of course, the reels work, the characteristic uh, feature, uh, property of the reels was that every bounded set of real numbers and simple and infinite. So again, sets were indispensable. The other things were not indispensable. So that's why set theory. So let's start, but of course, they are not using higher set theory. They don't, don't mention exactly the axiom of the F or other. The more or less naive set theory. So let's start with this ideal language of set theory. So terms. Abstract terms for sets were used all the time. So I have a variable term and I have these terms in which variable can be bound. And formula, the atomic formula, T equal S and equality in the T belongs to S. And closer other negation, junction, conjunction, it's a self quantifier. Okay, some of you say, what about for all in the, <coughs> so for all in implication? And I say they can be T fine using this. Then Somebody say, okay, but you can also define the disjunction in terms of negation of conjunction. True, but as it happens, the definition of for all and the implication in terms of negation and conjunction are useful for the work I'm going to present, while that for disjunction is not. So I'm leaving this uh, here. And I'm, all, I'm talking now about from the classical point of view, of course. 
and the ideal center, we have extensionality, we have the compression schema. I, we can, I would edit the regularity schema or epsilon induction, but I don't want to dwell about it because my time is limited. Uh, but, and of course, everyone will know that this is ideal, perhaps it's called ideal calculus in the books of uh, Frank Levy, uh, Frank Marilene Levy, and it inconsistent. So the solution of predicativist is to change here one word, predicative. This is not only the solution of, uh, of course, uh, predicative, it's also ZF, most of it. You might say that it's based on limiting what for formula we can put here by, uh, uh, according to various criteria. So it's more, we are talking about predicative uh, criterion. So what is predicative? The term goes back to one current. This is the way at least I understand. So two basic principles, the main one is the first. So higher order construct like set, function are acceptable. First, introduce two definitions. So we don't want to refer to some entities which we cannot even define or uh, talk about, in fact. <coughs> But of course the definitions would be good definition. Okay, what is, a, what is a good definition? So these are some necessary conditions, not singular, refer to construct which we are introduced before. So uh, stage by stage. And also should characterize the defined construct in absolute universe independent way. So they really should define in a unique way, absolute way. I want to apologize. If somebody come, come to me after that, my talk and say, you are using too much the word absolute, then I left to your answer, you are absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, which I think follow from the first time, towards the later, the set of all why, the natural number sequence is the basic, well understood mathematical concept as a totality, it constitutes a set. So, these are uh, the, pre the principle, and the question is, what is ready? What exactly defining the absolute universe independent way? So let's see first of all, what hints can you take from set theory itself? So first of all, there is a notion of, of course, a notion of absoluteness of formula in set theory. The formula, very roughly, is absolute if the truth value it gets by assignment in transitive class depends only on V but not on M. Well, it's not that simple, but it's okay. it gives the idea. But this only doesn't def uh, define when we have a formula, we have an object the truth, about the truth value. But it does say what formula defines a set in an absolute. What we have in the theory, as far as I know, of set theory which is related to this are not what formula, but what construct, what operation. You can do the set at least from absolute collection to other absolute collection. And this the work of uh, uh, Gadel on the uh, uh, constructible universe. So their union, intersection are constructible. Other basic are constructible. Power set is not constructible because it's not, doesn't lead, it's not an absolute operation, doesn't lead forward. Given a set, if you apply it, then what is going to be the power set? It depends on the unit, what you take as the universe. So this gives an it, this gives it, but it doesn't give an answer to the question, what formula are absolutely the same define absolute co collection of absolute sets. So, what the next two slides are going to be vague because I'm talking about ideas that I want to make from, translate from vague ideas to precise mathematical uh, definition. So, universe independence. The intuitive demand is that the identity of something that belongs to F2, to F2, to two universes. And I'm not saying that they are, that, uh, cannot be large cardinal or the universe of the F, etc. How we say that cannot be certain about it, remember? So, uh, but the possibility exists. So the identity, whatever we take as the universe, the identity should be the same 
in two universes, S1 and S2. And by extensionality, which we accept here, it means that the same, uh, the same uh, elements satisfy the property that X belongs to T both in S1 and S2. So, for example, if S1 are a transitive uh, collection and A belongs to the intersection, then this is good because belonging to the, to the, to the union. Uh, the same elements are both, uh, we have the same elements in, to, to the union, both in S1 and S2. But not when you talk about the uh, power attacks, so, so we see the difference why this is a good operation for the constructed universe, while this is not. And if we generalize it here, the main thing that you have a formula, binary, binary relation, and talk about absoluteness about this part, X belong, to, X belong to D. Generalize this so if we have a formula with F is free variable of phi is X1 to X and Y1 to YM, then we say it's phi domain independent, that the, the term domain independent is that universal independence is taken from database theory. I'll, remember, I'll return to this. Or safe also, it's, it's the term safe is using database theory for S1 and S2. If once we these the parameters are assigned some terms from the intersection, then we take this as a query. That's not find all the x that satisfy this, given this value for the parameters. The same answer in S2. The same we have in S1 and S2 the same answers. Again, provided that the parameter come from the intersection. And this let's call it safe, given S1 and S2, phi safe respect to this variable, and the main example for us, it's a theory that x1 below to s2 is safe respect to x1, this was also in the previous slide, for transiting s1 and s2. So, one possible characterization against black ones deal with respect to x, if phi belong to a phi safe respect to x for every transitive universe s1 and s2. Now, Two problems with this. The minor one. Transitive universe, the well transitive universe, somehow, somehow we assume I feel, a platonic universe V that we talk about transitive because it is not uh, a relative to which something is transitive. The second problem is this this is a kind of model theoretic if you want. It doesn't help us much unless we translate it to some syntactic material for, uh, for predicativity. And here is where, uh, as I'm going to see, database theory is going to help us. But before doing so, the usual way we do things in mathematics when you want sometimes to clarify notions like what is logical validity. Is if, it, if you are interested in one particular, Structure. We have made the realization to have a broader view. So, to see what principle we can adopt here, syntactical principles. So, let's forget it for a moment that we're interested in x1 below to x2, and let's say in general we have a first order signature. And in addition, we have what I call safety function. We say what atomic formula are safe respect to what variables. So it's a function assigned to every predicate, some subset, set of, uh, set of, sub of, ind of indices, which tell us, uh, again, what, it, what is safe respect to what. Given this, we say that S, uh, given such function f, we say S1 and S2, Structure for sigma are compatible, f compatible, if we have the same interpretation of the constants. It's very, by the way, I forgot to say, that the database no function symbols. The theory much simpler, much, much simpler if we don't assume, if we don't allow function symbol. So, only term for the time being, from the general point of view, are constant and, uh, and variable. And so the same with the constants, and P1 to X and is safe 
even S1, S2, with respect to these variables, if the indices, the set of indices belong to F of pi, F of pi, sorry. And S2 is called F extension of S1 if they are F compatible and the domain here, the uh, subset of the domain here, they are not very precise here, distinguishing the uh, structure and, uh, and its domain. Now, the idea is so, so predicative is safe, it's the same as safe, so in general. So if I have a safety function for a signature sigma, we call the formula phi F safe with respect to a set of variables. This is the notation. If phi is a safe with respect to X for every S1 and S2, which are F competitive. Yes. Absolute mean safety with respect to the empty sets, which means if they are given all the, take all the variables parameter and assign, assign uh, values to them, then the answer yes or no is domain independent. And predicative, which is what I'm looking for, is the special case where phi is safe respect to X. So the answer that the query, given the uh, value to other parameters, the answer what formula, what X satisfies the phi is absolute domain independent. As with this notion of compatibility given by F. What interests us in this talk is the case of set theory, in which I talk about you have a quality here, but so I was talking about language is equality. So sigma you have only the absolute symbol. And this just say that x1 belongs to x2 is safe, with, is safe with respect to x1, not safe with respect to x2. And if I write instead of f epsilon, so two structures are epsilon compatible, if s1 intersection is transitive of both, of both s1 and s2, and here this is a precisely defined notion because transitive is respect to both 1 and s2. Not talking about the whole universe, but that is subset of S1, I mean, if Y belongs to S1 and, uh, and X belongs to, to, uh, to S1, so uh, to the intersection, and Y belongs to intersection, and X belongs to Y, then X also belongs to intersection. That's all what it is. Now. And uh, we say that, to, uh, that uh, F is safe. F safe respect to X1 to Xn, if the following also enter S1 and S2 epsilon compatible, if they sign if they get assigned values to the parameters, then this, this collection and this collection are identical. I would say that epsilon extension is the same as what is called usually in set over end extension is the same thing. And the formula here is absolute, absolute if it's absolute in sense. This notion we use set theory in set <coughs> Okay. Now, the syntactic characterization. And this again, the main, the syntactic characterization is uh, several uh, principles that, that together are equivalent to the notion, to the semantic notion I have tried so far. So, starting with the, what, what the atomic formula I say for was given by the, by the F, by the, by, the, by the F. The rest are, you know, according to the, to the various connective quanti and quantifiers. So, X, not equal to X, X equal to T equal X, are um, safe respect to X if X is not free, of course. Negation only, only preserves absoluteness of formula, but not safety with both variables. So even if phi is safe respect to some set of variables, the negation of phi will be absolute. That's what it is saying. And then we see why F to F uh, disjunction, conjunction separately. So phi of psi. Safe respect to X if they both are safe respect to X. 
and this corresponds to union because if you want to find out all the all the set of all things that are satisfy this, you just take a note of this, those will satisfy this. This say that we have incremental, so this is safe respect to X, union Y, if this is safe respect to X, psi so is Y, and Y is the new variables. I return to this immediately uh, soon in the next slide. Because most of the things here I was taken from the database theory. Here the notion of that and dominant dependence, particular case in which uh, we're talking about safety of respect to all the free variables. There's a lot of literature, a lot of work about this done in database theory because we want our when we ask, we ask things, we ask queries, we want to get answers. That's why the world went to be finite. It was mentioned the other day in computer day. Domain dependency is also uh, the ensure this it's an, extra, an extra thing that is, that is taken to be very important. So trying to find to SQL other to be strong, be able to say, to ask only say only safe queries was a very important. And luckily, I, several years ago, I have to teach for a few years uh, database theory to students because there was nobody else at that time. I don't know how much the, my students got from my course in database theory, but I learned from it a lot. So, so it, it, it does pay to get some ideas from computer science because they, are, they have different, sometimes different ideas uh, that uh, have different point of view that one can adopt. This corresponds, of course, the, to projection. So there are some people that uh, the, uh, the relation algebras, so most of them. But this, but what they were lacking is this, the, what point in conjunction. Let me just say the last one. This means that the relation is not uh, is not recursive as it is on the RE. Sorry, I still I always say RE, not CE. <laughs> this is what I'm used to, and I see that I don't really see the reason to change this. Uh, but in practice, we'll replace this in some kind of uh, of a more concrete condition in order uh, to make it uh, if you want to really implement this. But. For the purposes of this talk, is I can leave this as it is. So about this one, this conjunction, understand what is going on here. Let's explain. So let's take one parameter, one x, one y. So the formula look like this: the conjunction phi of x and z and psi of x y z. And given a value from z, we want to compute all the pairs x y that satisfy this. So how we do it? We start the ends compute all the possible values for x. The database story is going to be, if phi is safe, it means it's going to be finite number, and we can compute all of them. And set theory means this for every, this is a collect, this collection is a set, given the value s for z. And then for every element, element in this solution of phi, we we put it here and find all the corresponding ones. So this is for every S and D here, we compute this. Again, database story, this means this set's going to be finite and computable. So at the end, we have a, a, a union of finite set of, computer, of computable sets. So it's going to be finite and computable. And here it's going to be absolute. If all these sets are absolute and they are uh, then the ZS is absolute, and all of this is going to be absolute identity. That, that's why this, uh, this conjunction works. Okay. That, by the way, the fact this is, in the past I just used this uh, uh, condition uh, as a as an approximation of the notion of the semantic notion of identity. But not long ago, still not of my proof that in general, if talk about first order signature, F function in general, we have this as a theory. This precisely is the syntactic characterization, RE1 of the notion of uh, general notion of safety. 
And here is another recitative characterization of the characteristic only absoluteness, which means, if I don't know if you remember, safe with respect to the empty set. So given f, you have the set delta f. This should remind you of form delta zero in set theory or in number theory. As if no, first of all, if if I is uh, if about atomic formula, if uh, this is given by by F, if what uh, formulas are what atomic formula is F for this effect, uh, and so once we have something, this, uh, then this is going to be the, belong to the to, uh, to the to the set delta F. Closer are the disjunction, conjunction, and so it's also disjunction, uh, replication, etc. Boolean operation. And this means, this means uh, bounded the quantification. So if I is safe as respect to its matrix K, and, uh, and it's atomic, like the story we talked about for all X belong to Y, or the six X belong to Y, so use atomic formula there for the atomic, for the bounded quantification, the same here. So this is bounded quantification, this is the like, less than y, or in other theory, x uh, belong to y in set theory, and, and this is the, the rest, if it belongs to delta f. So, closer under, exactly, usually closer under a Boolean cooperation and bounded quantification. And it's a theorem that is precisely every formula is absolute for f, if there exists such a, a formula in delta f, which is the same trivial and genotically equivalent. This is also a new theorem. Okay, and now I'll turn to uh, elementary predicative set theory. So, this remember the population axioms. And now we'll just say what is predicative, say from respect to X, and here I just repeat the, 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 condition, the condition which just follow the, the structure of formula. Here I also add uh, x belong to t. This we have always. And this is because this is the, what is, what is special about the set theory, the f of set theory, and the condition about negation, etc. And I'd call this the most basic predicate safety theory, r. And r is theory, it's this set for rudimentary set theory, is the induced proof system. But I have to, uh, to make some kind of uh, explanation here. The general theorem about uh, characterization was about first order languages. Here I'm using the same principle, but I'm not using first order language in the word, uh, meaning of the word, because here, my, my terms are, can be very complicated. It's not just a variable and constant, but also abstract term, which include formula, which include abstract term, etc. The principle all remains the same, but we don't. I don't can pretend anymore, cannot claim anymore that this is, uh, that this is uh, complete. It is not. Because we are not talking about uh, we, we allow more complicated language, and also we are talking about some, uh, also not every structure, but structure to satisfy the main principle. So, exceptionality, uh, this compression, predicative progressive principle, which can be extended, and also regularity, which I'm not going to talk about. Now, what is the expressive power of this system? Very, very simple to say. Just correspond what can be defined there is what is correspond to rudimentary, what is called uh, by Jensen rudimentary functions uh, and used in the is a study of constructibility. So since the time is beginning to run out, I, I'll skip it. So the idea is correspond to, uh, to rudimentary functions. There are some standard notations that can be defined here and I pick those that correspond to the axiom of ZF. So, for example, this corresponds to the uh, pairing axiom. This is the version of the of Cermelo progression. 
So, but Salvelo allow every formula here, but while here we allow only absolute formula. This is the version of replacement. By the way, this is usually, usually mathematics, this is the way replacement are, is used. If you look at terms and books, and then we have this notation, we have this notation for set, we have this notation for set, for example, very simple example. One can denote, can denote the set of uh, even numbers by 2n and belong to, uh, to omega, for example. Or talking about, <laughs> I can give a more complicated example for this, but uh, so replacement is used in mathematics a lot, but in this, but in this, uh, in this form, in which is using explicit construction, not the general principle we have been uh, in set of. And the union here is a place, for example, you see that the use of conjunction, y belongs to t, x belongs to y, we can add it because it's not, doesn't appear here, and then quantification of y. So all of this is same respect to x, to, the, to x and y. This, after this, only respect to x. And also Cartesian product it, uh, uh, is, is available here, not through the use of, uh, of the operation of, uh, power, of power set. I skip this explanation of, uh, of uh, and go to the crucial properties of uh, RST for, the con for what comes next. So for itself, of course, it's not sufficient because the, the set of hereditary finite sets is a model of RST. So one cannot force the, the availability of, the natural, of any infinite sets, including the natural numbers, in RST. However, there is a formula of the language RST which defined what it means to be a natural number. I mean here by a natural number in the sense of von Neumann, natural or a finite ordinal, which I think is a, is a really excellent definition. So this formula, it's, it's not known well before, it's not something that I invented. One, we have one for variable x, and for any model of RST, this collection <coughs> is the collection of finite ordinates. Now, the formula itself is not safe according to the safety relation use. But it is absolutely defined the same collection, the collection of natural number in every model of RST. So it is predicative according to the original semantic idea of, predic of predicativity. That's why I say that I think that, that the natural numbers are, should, should be taken as a, as, a, as a set given to us, follow from the first principle. And since it's not available RST, then we should expand this RST to, uh, to a stronger uh, theory. And the simplest way of doing so is to add just a constant. So leaving everything else, what is the safety only now we have a richer set of terms because they have a new constant. And uh, accordingly, this safety relation is to change to this safety relation. And adding a new axiom for all x that belong to the constant omega, I think only if it satisfies this property of being finite uh, phenomenal ordinal. Now, this, this uh, theory, which I call RST omega, also has a minimal model. Even what is J2 in the hierarchy of Jensen is a minimal model of RST. And what is important that each element of J2 is defined by some closed term. So every element here has a name. The, again, if the importance of name was, and the naming was emphasized in other talks here, uh, like Geisman talk, and also Dexter Cousin talks from a completely different point of view. But this is part of what I take being constructive, is that to talk about things that we can name uh, by, by good names. Now, there was a work of uh, Nick Weaver that shown that J2 suffices as a universe for applicative, uh, for applicative mathematics. So, 
for all of it, for all of it, for set up out of view, this is for this is sufficient. So in a way we are looking here not to the maximal possible uh, universe, but so how, what minimal universe are sufficient for doing the mathematics to the way we know we know and love it. I know it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> However, we will to read this paper, which uh, treats the, it treats the R as a proper class, which, uh, which is fine. But the definition of, of, of a class is somewhat complicated, and it is very difficult to, 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 to ask what is a class, what is not, because it's not enough to be definable sub-collection. Um, the nation of definable uh, there is, uh, is uh, something I don't, I don't have time to explain. But this is the other condition. The intersection of it's not enough for it to be the final sub-collection. It also F should be an intersection of it if any element of it, any set, should, be, should also be a set. And this is something very, very complicated to check. As far as I check a lot about this, instead we can say a little bit limit, more limited uh, uh, definition of a class just take as a class anything of this form. Now, I use this notation here because all the time I use this, uh, these curly brackets and I use it also so, so far at the, language, at the meta language and in the object language of RST, hoping that there is going to be no confusion. But here also for class, this is a little bit too much, or just to say this. This is something in there, something new. So class term, if phi is absolute formula. And everything Weaver is doing there, is doing, can be done with this notion of class. So, uh, a bet, if, uh, from my point of view, a better solution is to use a somewhat rich, a stronger language. Every Navadio who knows, from my view, knows at some point I'll mention the possibility of using transitive closer operation because I think this is absolutely needed for understanding natural number, recursive definition, etc. And we understand it all, even as the children, the notion of descendants. And, uh, and other things like this, one doesn't need mathematics for this. I think it's a logical notion. So adding the possibility of a given formula phi to take the trans that, uh, that uh, denote the transit closer. I'm adding, so I skip some propaganda about how, how natural is, the, is this operator. And now they say, what happened if you add this? Now, before I use for, uh, for the principle uh, some methodology that uh, the Freeman uh, talk a lot about it, that the set theory, that the, the property of sets are generation what every finite set theory, finite set. And this is true, again, up to a point. So all the condition here were taken for database with finite set theory, but for transitive closure, I need another, another uh, safety condition. And it doesn't matter now what, only that it can be done, and this, of course, is not for finite set theory. Once we have it, it's very difficult to, to define omega, define it not as a, to be the constant, using a safe formula, the transitive R of something, etc. And here we jump, the minimal model jump from J2 to J omega, omega is the same as L omega omega. So, and this is a universe in which I believe, and part of to show that one can do most of the applicable mathematical first, second years, Comfortably. And the last slide. So if one can do it, and if one want to cross the board and go to things, then it's very easy to do because one can obtain the F from even from this rather easily. So in order to get the axiom of a uh, compression axiom of Peano, one just has to assume that every formula is absolute. If one power set to assume that this formula is absolute. For this, perhaps the best thing is to take uh, the subset relation, also, also primitive, you know, with the epsilon, and add some axiom about the relations. And if a replacement, if you have some complicated condition about, uh, about safety relation, you can get also replacement. 
so you can get everything except AC. AC, I have nothing to say. I don't accept it because I see no reason to accept it, but if someone wants, be my guest. That's it. Yes. Uh, so the big uh, question is uh, you claim that this is sufficient for all the uh, use of that you mentioned the same No, I didn't say all use. I was very cautious not to say all use. Use of applicative mathematics. And I can say that if not all applicative, but a great part, those, the one you use, one for three, I'd be very happy. Okay, well, I don't think we can solve it out in this two minutes, but I think the focus would really be in that class. I agree. I mean, you, you say we have attributed it to Lima, that he has shown it. You have a very strong claim, you shown it. You may, then you may have given a richer theory, but, but you attribute it also to your theory, but a much more modest claim. <laughs> so I don't, I don't understand exactly the status, but I think this is where the debate is. What Churchill once said about Etli, the leader of the Labour Party, he was told that he is he tell me that he's very modest, he said, yes, he's very modest, and he has all the reason of the world, in the world to be modest. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I am a modest, I'm trying to be modest with my goals, and I have good reason to be modest. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, so, <clears throat> we've had a lot of experience with a variety of predicated theories, and you can compare them as to your basic goals, which are to, first of all, given that the, the theory is uh, recognized to be predicated, that uh, you should be able to carry out scientifically applicable mathematics within it, and also it should be close to actual mathematical practice. Mm -hmm. Those are your two goals. Yes. Um, so the problem, it, it, it's understandable that there would be an appeal to working with set theory since people were are so familiar with set theory. But already when you come to analysis, you not only have to talk about real numbers, which in your system form a class, but you have to talk about functions of real numbers. Yes. And a variety of functions of real numbers, some of which can be in some ad hoc way or other reduced to in, in, in complexity, like continuous functions of real numbers to, to that level. But uh, it's, this seems to me to argue against a, a set theory because we don't have a direct way of, uh, of, of talking about functions of real numbers or uh, let alone higher types, functionals as many parts of the uh, analysis are concerned with. So that's why I've mainly been interested in working with theories in which higher type notions can be directly represented. Okay, first of all, about using uh, 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 the real numbers as a class. I said Weaver did use use this because he was using J2 in this, in this paper, and then he has no other, other, uh, other possibility. I'm in fact using something stronger, J omega to the omega. And so I have at least two options. One is to do, again, say it's class, uh, but there are set, certain sets of uh, real numbers which are, can be defined, and certain functions, etc., that can be defined because I allow here higher order constants. So it's not that I should stop here. Uh, so uh, I can do say, the same kind of, uh, of things that, 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 that the river is doing in order to, to code all of this, but it's a code here. But more conveniently, because I can use a, strong, a, a more comprehensive uh, domain. Another possibility which I'm considering is to say, I don't want to take, I want to take R as a set. And for this, I'm just going to use, say, all the 
all the all the derivative what binner uh, binner in number can be defined using an uh, using an absolute formula bin binner in not a set of real number uh, so only the say for example only the reals that are that are below 2j omega for example and even name there this only the reals are it which interest me I, I shall never need any other reals perhaps or not we will say that don't need any real which is not available in j2 let's be j omega That's, and this is my real numbers, and everything that one can do is do is that pi is there, e is there, every real number that you can keep, really think about, really want to use is going to be there. And anyway, there is, I don't believe the existence of the reals. The reals, what you have really is the Euclidean, the Euclidean line. That's what you really have. And the corresponding between the two is assumed everywhere, but I'm not sure that, that, uh, that is, this is justified. So I think for the physics, for the using mathematics, my conjecture is say, taking only the real j omega is enough, and then the next type will be j omega to the two, j omega to the three, etc. That's why I think j omega to the omega is going to be sufficient. But it's going to be. But of course, it's, when I say it's good, one should check and verify. Okay, so let's thank the speaker. <laughs>